Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Premiere scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can apply video effects to your selected clips inside of your sequence. So all we can do here is just select a bunch of clips we want to apply mosaic effects to, and it's going to go through and apply that to each one of our selected clips. Now this is containing sort of a combination of a few previous tutorials we've done, but it's going to be more of a composite video where we take an old concept or an old tutorial of how we added a video effect to a clip, as well as how we can loop through clips. And we're going to do that to locate all of our selected clips and apply a video effect to each of them. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link, try it out for yourself, and of course, follow us there for coding updates. Also down in the description, you can follow us on Instagram for other live updates as well. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, the link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started writing this script. We're going to first start off by enabling QE, which we can do by saying app.enable QE. And if you're not familiar, QE just enables a whole bunch of useful extra features, such as being able to apply video effects, audio effects, and much more. Then we're going to create a main function. This is just going to contain all of our main code. So that's how we call it to run it. And we're going to say function main. And inside of here, we can have all of the code that's going to perform our operations. The first thing I'm going to do is define what effect I want to apply. In my case, we just want to apply a mosaic. And all you have to do is use the name of the effect itself as it appears once you apply it. So I'm going to say var effect name is equal to, in this case, mosaic. I'll also go ahead and zoom in here so you can see better. Now we want to go ahead and check if they have a, a sequence open in their project. This is a check you don't always have to do, but we want to make sure they have something open here in the viewer. So I'm going to say if something, I'm going to say if app.project.active sequence is equal to null, aka if we call this and it gives us undefined or a null value, we're going to alert the user, please open a sequence first. Then we'll go ahead and say return false. And what that will do is exit out of our main here and basically wait until they select an active sequence so we can get past this section of code. Now we're going to get our sequence into a variable. We're going to have our vanilla sequence, which is going to be the regular object uh, model for the sequence, which is going to be app.project.active sequence. And then we're also going to have a QE sequence. And the QE sequence is what we can use to do a whole bunch of other useful uh, methods and things. And to get the QE sequence, we'll say QE.project.get active sequence and just give it the argument zero. Now to make sure we're getting these right, we're going to say alert our vanilla sequence dot name, duplicate that and alert our QE sequence dot name. So now when I run this, I'm going to get my 3D scale script video times two, one for the vanilla, one for the QE. Now I'm also going to create a variable called video tracks and set this equal to my vanilla sequence dot video tracks. We're going to loop through all of our video tracks in order to find any selected layers, it's gonna be looking for all of our, our selected layers, no matter if they're on video track one, two, three, whatever. So we'll store that in a variable so that now we can loop through our video tracks. The way we're gonna do that is say var t is equal to zero. We're gonna say t is less than video tracks dot not length, not num items, but num tracks, and then increment t by one. And in order to apply effects, if you haven't already seen that tutorial, we're going to need the QE track as well. So I'm going to create a variable called this QE track, and I'm going to set that, this QE track, equal to my QE sequence dot get video track at, and the index is going to be index T, because we're looping through here. We're using the vanilla to loop through, but we're going to use the indices of that to get the actual QE track. So if I go ahead and alert this QE track 
I think we can alert the name possibly. We get video one, video two, and video three. So now we're looping through our video tracks as we need. Now we need to loop through one more layer deep. Not only are we looping through our video tracks, but if you look here on video track one, I have a whole, whole bunch of track items or clips as they're called. So what we need to do is loop through all of those. The way we can do that is just say something like var c for clip is equal to zero. We'll say c is less than this qe track dot clips. And actually dot clips is if it's a vanilla type track, we actually just need to say num items and increment c. Now this could actually give us a lot of alerts to go through, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna say this qe track and then to get the actual clip, we need to say get item at index C. And we wanna say dot name. And now we should get a huge list of alerts because I have so many cuts in this video. But as you can see, it's going through each and every one of our clips. Now, one thing about QE clips, which I've gone over before in a tutorial about looping through uh, normal and QE things, is that if there's an empty space, in QE, this is actually represented as an item. If I hit this item here, the name is gonna give me the name of this uh, clip, and then it's actually going to count this as part of the indices as well. In the vanilla DOM, this is not how it works. It's not gonna ever give you an empty object. But in this case, in the QE, it will. And if we try and grab, say, the name of something that's empty, it's gonna give us an error. So what we're gonna do is check the type of clip this is. So I'll make an if statement, and then I'm going to say if this QE track dot get item at C dot type, uh, we're going to make sure that's a string is equal to an empty. We can check if, if it's an empty type. In our case, we want to say if it's not an empty, then we'll do something. Let's go ahead and write line uh, our get item at here, dot name, and let's create a quick else to see if we actually have any empty tracks. We'll just say found an empty track. Now when I run this, you can see we're gonna get a whole bunch of normal footage names, found an empty track, whole bunch of normal footage, empty track, empty track. So it is important that we check to make sure the, the track item or the clip we're looking at is not an empty, especially considering we can't apply an effect to something that's not there. So we can get rid of this else. We just wanted to make sure that we did have some empty tracks. And now let's go ahead and apply our effect. Now, if we go ahead and search inside of the object model viewer or the scripting guide and type in dot is selected, we can see what we have access to if it's selected. In our case, even if we just go down to is select or dot selected, it looks like we only have access to say dot is selected. Now the tricky thing is this is a track item, not to be confused with the QE track item, which is what this is. This clip here uh, that we're looking at is referencing a QE track item, but we can only check if it's selected if it's a vanilla track item. Um, as you can see here, we have normal track items or clips, and then we also have QE track items, which does not have an option to check if it's selected. So in order to do this properly, we, need, we now need to get the vanilla uh, track. So I'll create a variable called vanilla track item or vanilla clip. And we're going to then set vanilla clip equal to get vanilla clip. And we're going to create a custom function here called get vanilla clip. The reason for this is we want to be able to take in some simple parameters and then get the clip with the same uh, properties, basically. We're going to provide get vanilla clip with a QE clip and a track index. So we need a clip to compare it to to make sure that these two clips are the same. We're just one of them is going to be QE, one of them is going to be vanilla, and also a track index to simplify our search. Uh, and where it's going to be. So our QE clip is going to be this QE track dot get item at C. And our track index is going to be equal to the current track we're looking at. In this case, that's going to be T. 
not to be confused with C, which is the current clip we're looking at. Now we're going to loop through our vanilla sequence in order to get our vanilla clip. We already made the assumption right here that their uh, sequence is open. So I'm going to say var, we'll just say i is equal to zero. i is less than app.project.active sequence. We want to grab video track and track index, uh, track index dot clips and the num items of those clips. So we'll ask the increment i by one. What this is doing is looping through from clip number zero to the very last clip. Uh, this needs to be num items. And we're looking at the current video track that we are analyzing up here, all the clips, and we're gonna loop through all those clips. Now there's a couple things we can compare to let us know whether these clips are the same. In my case, all of these video clips here have the same exact name. They're all the same footage separated. So not only do we need to compare the name, we need to also compare some times to make sure that it's the same clip and not confused with the others which actually have the same exact name. So what I'm gonna do is say app.project.active sequence.video tracks track index clips i dot name if that's equal to our QE clip that's good that means it has the same name that we're looking for but that's not the only thing we need to check for I'm going to uh, copy and paste the code from the actual code example here but we're gonna put an and and this statement here let's break this apart really quick what we have we're saying if our current clip if the end of our current clip m minus the start of our current clip is equal to basically the the end and start of our QE clip, um, then these are gonna be the exact same length. We're just saying, let's say for example, this clip here, if the end time of this clip minus the start time, which is the duration of the clip, is the same as in vanilla as it is in QE, then that's also what exactly we want. Um, then finally we need to return that vanilla clip. We'll say return and we'll grab clips i. So once again to get the vanilla clip we're just comparing the name. If the name of our clip is the same and the duration is the same then that's what we want. So we have our vanilla clip. Why again did we need the vanilla clip? We need the vanilla clip to check if something is selected because that's the only way we can currently check it. So we're gonna say if vanilla clip is not null, if, if our vanilla clip variable is valid, uh, we could also here return null just to make sure that's covered. Um, and then we're gonna check if vanilla clip dot is selected. And we just have to say is selected and it assumes that it's talking about it's true. If that's the case, then this clip is indeed selected. Now we want to apply our mosaic. The way we add a video effect is to grab our QE clip. So this QE track dot get item at C dot add video effect. And now inside of the video effect, we need to provide it with the proper video effect reference. In order to do that, we're going to say qe.project.getVideoEffectByName. And inside of here is where you would type in your effect name, whether it's transform or whatever. In our case, we have a variable called mosaic. We'll put that in there. And now hopefully, if this is working properly, I can select a clip here, run this, and you can see we're getting null. Let's go ahead and figure out why vanilla clip in this case is null when it should be coming back as a clip here. I just realized in our get vanilla clip function, we're comparing the name of our vanilla clip with just QE clip. That needs to be dot name. So now let's go ahead and try it. You can see C is undefined. Yep, I'm using the variables from the old algorithm. These need to be I not C. Select our clip and run it again. And I'm still not getting anything. There's no errors, but let's see if I alert hello here if it shows me. We do get a hello. We get many hellos, actually. Which means that that's probably... Is this applying to a whole bunch of other... Don't think so. 
There must be a slight error in here that is messing this up. I'm going to see, maybe I need to put true on this, but then that should still be applying the video effect. Get item at C, add video effect, get video effect by name. Our hello is being displayed many times, I believe, which is not what we want because we should only have one thing selected in this particular case. I'm trying to compare these back and forth and I don't see any major issues. Let's try and just copy and paste that and use I instead. Still getting a whole bunch of alerts or right lines. At this point, I'm gonna compare it to the original code and see if I can figure out why we're having this problem. Maybe if I don't return null, but then that doesn't cover that. We can try and say it does not equal null, but that shouldn't really affect our get vanilla clip function, which is giving us too much. Well, in this case though, it looks like it's applying now, but is it applying to others? Let's write effect applied. In this case, it's just applied it to one. So if I undo all that, maybe I've been wrong this whole time. Is it working? Okay, we'll start fresh. So it's saying hello a whole bunch of times, but it's only applying the effect once. So I actually confused myself by that. So let's select a few other layers. Let's have three here or two separated. And if we run this, we should get two effect applied, perfect. And now each of these layers has a mosaic applied. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, including the bit of troubleshooting I had to do to get this to work or to understand how it was working in the background. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. Try it out for yourself. Make sure to follow us there for coding updates. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link in the description. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.